In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good people, I'm sure you are well, and progressing very well. It is Wednesday of the 10th week in Ordinary Time. And we are today on day 12. Today it is 9th, the 9th day of June in this year of our Lord and Savior 2021. And we are on day 12 in our 40 days novena for family deliverance. So, tomorrow is a very important day because tomorrow I will ring the bell. So tomorrow's a devotion will start by ringing the bell. When the bell is rung, that will mean that uh, whoever joins after the bell is automatically late. What does it mean to join the novena late? It means that uh, we start all over again. All over again. That means that uh, if you join on the 11th day of June, you'll start from day one and then you'll finish 11 days after the rest of us. So that is exactly what that means. After the bell, it means that uh, you may have a journey to do alone. Of course, not alone because I'll be doing with you. So those of you who join later, you have to tell me that, Father, I am starting so that I can journey with you from day one and also meaning that you will finish some days after the rest of us have been able to finish. Having said that, we continue with uh, the devotion that we started on, on Friday last week. And uh, Monday, uh, Tuesday, M Monday we started the, the sources, the sources of uh, the family bondages, dysfunctions, and, and uh, family curses, which are either generational or situational. Whatever the case, then we went through two of them and we are, we start, we are stuck at the sexual curse or the sexual scene. And uh, yesterday, we went through the types of the forbidden in the Bible. And today, we are looking at how to overcome. Knowing that I, am, I have a problem is not enough. Once the diagnosis has been done, it would only be logical that the prescription and the medication is done. So today, I want to give you the ways that you can be able to overcome the sexual sin if we have to live uh, in the way God designed each one of us. Remember, and this is what I told you the other day, God designed sex to be a reminder and picture of Jesus' covenant relationship with his people. Underline that. Now, this is the primary purpose of sex. Understanding this explains why sex is so destructive outside the covenant of marriage and why we experience such shame and brokenness when we approach it selfishly. Now, if you have struggled or are struggling even now, there of course are ways that you can be able to break away from that bondage or from that or from the chains. One of it is through the gospel. Through the gospel. Now the gospel is the power to free us from the cycle of sin, the cycle of shame that comes with sexual sin. There is no sexual sin that is beyond the grace and the forgiveness of God. Please note that. That there is no sexual sin that is beyond the grace and forgiveness of God. So we cannot remain chained. At the same time, we are experiencing the grace of God. So, God takes our sin seriously. 
so serious that he killed his only son for it. By believing that Christ paid for every sin, we are freed to experience true intimacy with God. The gospel also enables us to sever the roots of sin and its temporary promises of pleasure by offering us a superior, a superior eternal satisfaction in Christ. Therefore, dear friends, for us to be totally, totally unchained, as it were, we must be radically honest with ourselves, radically honest with ourselves, repent and acknowledge that we need God to change because it is only God who changes people. Radically honest. One of the reasons why a good number of us are still chained is because we live in denial. Other times we justify, philosophize, theologize, mention them. None of that will take away the truth, the gospel. Number two, how to break the sexual scene is through the community. Now, sexual sin and brokenness brings with it deep, deep shame. Not only shame, but shame and guilt that leads us to hide and isolate ourselves from others. Therefore, you realize that if you are married, God's design is for your relationship with your spouse to be guided by complete honesty. Okay? Your spouse can be your greatest advocate in the path of healing. Your spouse can be the greatest advocate in the path of healing. Now, share with them what you are struggling with and pray and fight together. Now, if you are single, find a close friend or two and share with them people who cannot judge you, people who cannot condemn you, People who will not spite you once you have opened up to them. Then here it is where you need a lot of, um, um, a lot of spiritual insight to be able to go through that and ask God to reveal to you who are those friends within your cycle, within your circle, whom you can open up to, because not every friend can be trusted with the secret of our hearts. Some of them have been waiting to hear your weaknesses, then they broadcast. No wonder we talk about uh, a moment of discernment, spiritual discernment, to a point where now um, God shows you the way that this is the person. Share with them. Could be friends, could be spouse, a family member. But the point is, at the end of the day, there is always somebody you can be able to open up to. And then you'll be able to be, to be helped as it were. We cannot grow in Christ apart from the community. We should have what I call a missionary community, a small group that we can walk with through this and any other issue. Specific issue support groups can also be helpful in dealing with the sexual sin. Please do not isolate yourself because chances of us getting lost in this is high because of the level of guilt and shame that is associated. Number three, counseling. 
counseling. <coughs> that is a um, professional counseling. In some cases, where the intensity of the struggle and the level of brokenness that has been experienced is greater, it can be helpful to supplement the care you get from the community with the care of a professional that is specially trained. Specially trained. Not just a motivational speaker, but somebody who is specially trained. And here I want to put it very clearly. Sometimes we mistake our pastors, our priests, and our bishops, our evangelists, our prophets, our apostles, sometimes we mistake them as counselors. Now listen here. Not every religious man or woman is a counselor trained specially. Please note that. Being a priest does not make you automatically a counselor. I need to, de to demythologize that and clear that and debunk that because it's important. Being a pastor does not make one automatically a counselor. That is why quite a good number of us have gotten lost in the hands of priests and pastors and, and uh, evangelists and they mentioned them because we went to them thinking that they are counselors and a good number of them also are victims and they need to be counseled. That is why we have ended up getting lost because we are seeking help from a fellow who has nothing to offer. That is why you may have noted, you go to some of us, priests and pastors, and mention them. When you go and state your case, you are given some prayers to go and pray, some Bible verses, some drama things, dramatic things, uh, because that, that is the, the deficiency the fellow is suffering from. So, it is always good. Ask, if you don't know who a good counselor is, please ask for, for referrals. You can be referred to. And uh, you can, I know you know people who can help you. If you don't, uh, you can ask for the CK to be able to get you a referral. Because it is important. Not all of us are trained specially to become counselors. So there comes a time that you get to a professional counselor who is specially trained. That is very important. That is very, very important. Um, then you are able to be guided on how you can be able to go about it. So we pick it up from there tomorrow morning. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Wednesday.